Hey, hey, welcome to the Summit Host Hangout Podcast, where you'll learn how to plan, strategize, and launch your profitable online summit. No influencer status necessary. I'm your host, Krista from Summit in a Box, and we are currently in a series about virtual summit speakers. So today in episode 112, we're breaking that down to talk about whether you should share the full audience list with each of your speakers. Honestly, I'm not convinced that there's a whole lot up for discussion here, so it'll be a short and sweet one today, but it's a question that I'm asked often enough that it warrants a quick episode. So let's start with just a little history of how this has looked with virtual summits. So back when summits first started, it was 100% standard to share the full attendee list with all of your speakers. So if they participated, if they spoke, they got the entire list, whether that was 200 people or 20,000 people. Um, And back then, it was actually like the biggest reason that a lot of speakers would decide to participate, like thousands of email addresses in exchange for a 30-minute presentation. All right, I'll do that. But this was back before GDPR was a thing and back before people really thought to care when their email addresses were shared. Times have changed, as I'm sure you know, and so has this strategy along with it. Which brings me to my answer to this question. Should I share my full attendee list with Summit speakers? No. You should not. It is definitely not GDPR friendly in any way for someone to get added to 20 extra email lists after signing up for your event. And it's not a good experience for anyone as a whole. So even if you can find a way to make it perfectly compliant, it is not beneficial for you, for your attendees, or for your speakers. For attendees, all it's going to do is just overwhelm the heck out of them when they suddenly start getting emails from 20 or 30 new people all at once. That is not a good experience. They're not hearing from the people that they're actually interested in, and they're just going to get real quick to hit that unsubscribe button. And because of that, it's not at all beneficial for your speakers. So instead of you sending them like a curated list or them being able to collect a curated list of people who actually care about what they were talking about, they're just getting this random list of all kinds of people who might not have even paid any attention to them at all. So, you know, we want to do better with this and make sure attendees are only hearing from people they want to hear from and speakers are only wasting their time and energy and space in their email marketing platform communicating with the people who they have a chance of converting. So what should we do instead? I know this can be tough. Being able to promise thousands of new leads to your speakers could be a huge driver of getting them to agree And not offering it can be scary, especially if you're starting with a really small audience. But luckily, there are a few ways you can build into your summit to allow speakers to build their lists instead. So the first way is to let them pitch a freebie at the end of their presentation. Freebies perform better than paid offers after this type of talk anyway. And when it's a freebie directly related to helping the attendees get the outcome the presentation talked about, like taking that next step or helping them follow along with what they're talking about, there will be a high rate of viewers who'd go ahead and download it and opt into their email list. From there, the speakers are welcome to send those people to a tripwire offer, add them to their funnel, send regular emails, whatever that looks like for them. Getting them in there through a freebie is way more beneficial than just sending all the emails. The second way you can help your speakers build their email list through your summit is inviting them to contribute a bonus to your all-access pass. So not only will this help you create an incredible all-access pass offer, but it's an easy way for speakers to get additional email addresses. And I say easy because the best bonus contribution is one that they've already created. Uh, A mini course, 30 days in their membership, templates, a workshop, anything they've already created that relates to your summit works. From there, when someone purchases your All Access Pass, they'll go to the checkout page for each speaker or each speaker contribution they're interested in, at least, to enter a coupon code and claim that bonus. And from there, they can be added to the speaker's email list. Hopefully, the speakers will be following the right policies, but from there, it's out of your hands. So that's another really powerful way speakers can build their lists. And you can learn more about how to get speakers to contribute a bonus to your All Access Pass in episode 70, which we will link in the show notes for you. So while we're no longer wanting to share the full attendee list with all of the speakers, there are still ways you can set your speakers up to get a nice pile of leads from speaking. So position it the right way to them, make the process easy, and you will still get an impressive yes rate from the people you pitch. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. For show notes and resources mentioned, head to summithosthangout.com slash 112. In the next episode, we'll be chatting about how to be a good virtual summit speaker, so be sure to tune in for that. 
Like with anything, planning and hosting an online summit is a whole lot more fun when you're surrounded by other people who get it. For a community of other summit hosts who can be alongside you to celebrate wins, share advice, offer support, talk more about this topic, join us inside of the free Summit Host Hangout Facebook group. And you can head to summithosthangout.com slash community. I cannot wait to see you inside. Now go out and take action to plan, strategize, and launch your profitable online summit.